in this uh, tutorial we'll be handling distillation column how to model them um, or rather how to simulate a distillation column all right and the case study we handle will be ethanol water separation so as you can see we have a feed composition we have about ethanol there 0 0.5 percent water 0 0.4 5 percent then we have the feed pressure to be one atmosphere the feed temperature 20 degrees celsius and we are required to produce about 82 percent ethanol so this is basically what your distillation column looks like you have your feed you have your distillate and you have your bottom all right so how do you get your ethanol i'm um, sorry your distillation column to get converged uh, number one the feed stream must be fully defined here yeah? and um, the bottom pressure you must make sure that the pressure at the bottom is higher or equal to the distillate pressure that's the pressure at the top all right so basically that's how to do that okay so having known this now we'll go straight to the simulation environment and start up so we have to already in the properties manager we we'll have to add our component list so we have ethanol then we have water um for the feed package remember remember the tutorial where we handled um how to select the appropriate feed package for your simulation you have to revisit it for ethanol water we cannot use pen grab for ethanol water we'll use um, gcos okay so you can actually go back to using the method assistance to guide you on how to do that i won't be doing that in this video all right so we'll have to go straight to for ethanol water gcos is the best uh, property package for it so we'll go to the simulation environment and we define our stream so what we have there we have the composition uh, we have um, 0 0.55 for ethanol we have 0 0.45 water right and why are we using this lesion column for this the reason is simple both ethanol and water have different um, boiling points so we are doing the separation based on relative volatility all right so basically that's why we're using this lesion column if you have to use an absorber then we will be considering solubility but in this case we cannot use um solubility right so we have to use um we have to use um temperature difference for the separation that's why we're using this station column okay so um let's continue with this we've imputed the composition we have to impute the temperature which is 20 degrees celsius um pressure pressure was one atmosphere right one atmosphere okay so um the fluids okay we assume a flow rate of 1000 all right if flow rate is not given to you um but in this case we assume a flow rate of 1000 sorry what happened okay composition didn't quite enter when it is all right so we'll have 0 0.45 here okay so our stream is ready so i just call this thing um feed so this is my problem i already know how to do all of this so we'll come here um distillation all right so it's our distillation column double click on it uh, it's a little, a little bit more complex but it's not that complex all right so now looking at this you see the number of stages at default is 10. so i always advise you leave the number of stages at this particular stage when you're running the simulation then when you did not meet up with the purity you can start adjusting the number of stages to give you the required or the desired purity all right that will help to um, help you to know the number of stages required for the simulation all right so what we need to do now we'll add feed all right so we are going to assume that this feed is entering at the center of the stage which is stage five this might change okay in the course of the simulation but first of all these are the assumptions you have to make to start up all right so for the condenser energy we just put on q all right that's um, the energy released or removed from the condenser then we can call this rep q the energy added to the um to the reboiler rather now we have for the condenser type we have um, um three different types of condenser we have total for total condenser you um you are actually um 
condense and everything and, and you're getting um, just a liquid outlet all right for total you have a liquid outlet for pressure you have both liquid and you have vapor outlets at the top then for full reflux it simply means you're you're sending back all the um liquid back all right then you have this um vapor here so that's basically how to do this so for this ethanol is going to come out as liquid all right so we are going to select a total condenser because we need ethanol here to be in liquid phase right the boiling point of an ethanol has to be at the top because ethanol has a lower boiling point than water water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius <laughs> ethanol has a boiling point of 78.37 degrees Celsius so that's the reason why we have to draw ethanol from the top okay so for the bottom we are expecting to get water from the bottom all right you see this is activated so I can click on next I'll click on next again all right so for the condenser remember the pressure that is coming in the feed pressure is one atmosphere right so remember the one of the criteria that i gave to you i said um i said that the bottom pressure must be higher or equal to the top pressure right so this was um, one of the assumptions you have to make so in this case uh inlet pressure is one atmosphere okay and um we can assume that the bottom pressure that there's no um, pressure drop across the column all right we can make that assumption oh okay so we are assuming that there's no pressure drop that means we have the pressure here is the same pressure here and the same pressure here so that means in this case we have equal pressure at the bottom and at the top more like um, atmospheric distillation all right so this is exactly what uh, we need to do now so at this point the condenser i will impute one atmosphere here okay and the uh, reboiler i will impute one atmosphere here. so we continue with that all right um we just this was our option also we can actually um move on okay for the liquid rate that's the ethanol rate remember the fraction let's let's go back and check this now we have from our assumption we have a uh, feed flow rate feed flow rate to be equal to uh, 1000 kilogram mole per hour all right that's our feed flow rate so um 55 percent of this is 550 so we are going to assume that all of this goes to the top which you know it's not possible but that's going to be a base of assumption all right so let's let's do that when we do that high seas will recalculate and give us the right flow rate that will come up from the top so 0 0.55 times 1000 will give us 50, 550 kilogram of power uh, they'll make an assumption for the reflux ratio which can be two three so you make your assumptions and um, i'm assuming the reflux ratio of two i'll click on done if the reflux ratio is not right you will know because it won't converge and you have to keep adjusting it i'll show you where to adjust so what we need to do come to uh monitor check your degree of freedom you see that degree of freedom is zero that means we've imputed everything we need to impute now this reflux ratio this is the specified value in the course of the calculation or after the calculation you see the um calculated value here if the calculated value is not equal to the specified value that means um that means that your specification is wrong and you have to keep adjusting this till you have what you need all right so in this case we've done everything we need so i'll just run since the degree of freedom is zero i can just click on run and um, converge but the truth is in most cases the solution column can be a little bit um, difficult if you make wrong assumptions right if you make wrong assumptions it's it's going to be quite difficult okay so that's why you have to be careful with your assumptions especially for the for the reflux ratio um, for the pressure um, condenser and the regular pressure specifications you need to be um, very careful with all of that okay and also when you're running your simulation your eyes should be on this environment here this window here so you see the equilibrium this has to do with the material balance this has to do with the heat balance now if this is less than um 0 0.0 0 0 0 0 0 0 right um seven rather if you have if it's less than uh minus three exponential minus three this won't convert then you know that your material balance is wrong if the heat spec is less than minus three it will not converge 
simply mean by the heat specification is wrong, then you have to come over to the parameters tab and probably keep working on this, or you can just come to specification, come to spec, add spec, click on add spec, you can now select column temperature, alright, that's column temperature, and keep adjusting the temperature till you, your simulation converges. Okay, but let's see if we're able to meet up with um, what we're asked to do. Remember, what we're asked to do is to get 82%. So we have 80% with number of stages of um, the total number of stages of 10, right? 10, we have um, 80%, and we need 82%. So let me see if I change the feed, if it will have effect, right? That's the inlet <coughs> feed location. If it will have effect on it, let's see. So let's check the worksheet again. It dropped. Do you notice that it dropped to 78? So let me come back here and um, increase the feed location. Let's say we increase it to seven and see if anything will change or reset our run. Um, so let's go up and check. So as you can see, we have 82 percent. So now the ways you can inc um, improve on the purity of your products is by increasing the number of stages or changing the feed location. Alright, so with this feed location, as you can see, we have 82%. Alright, so let's see if we increase it. So let's say we send the feed location to 8. Let's see if uh, uh, the effect we have on our stuff is still within 82%. So we're able to know with the feed location of um, the feed location of 7, we are okay with 82% uh, purity of ethanol because that's exactly what we wanted to do. So basically this is how to model your distillation column. Alright, you see it's fully converged. The color of this has changed from what it was before. So we have our ethanol here. Then we have water. So let's check this water and see the composition um, see composition. So I have about 21% 20, ethanol here. So Let's see if we can increase this. Let's check if it's possible to increase. Uh, that's to reduce the amount of ethanol in water. We have about 21%. That means we can still extract some ethanol. So if I increase this number of stages to 14, uh, let's see the effect we have on the purity. Okay? So let's check. That's 83%, right? Uh, let's try 25, 25 stages. But one thing you should also understand is that the higher the number of stages, um, the higher the cost of uh, manufacturing your distillation column. So that's, those are the things you have to consider. So this is 85% purity by increasing uh, the number of stages. If I now decide to change my feed location to 22, let's see if it will have much effect on the our production. Right, so that's about 86 percent. So this is how to uh, this is how to play around the uh, play around with the distillation column in order to get the appropriate or the desired uh, product specification. So you play around with the stage number of stages and the uh, inlet feed inlet so, so basically that's how it's done all right so um, thank you for your time and uh, please you need to go over this again so that it becomes part of you and also do what you keep practicing because that's the only way you can uh, master what you're doing all right